So you started boxing at six. Six years old. So you were you were ready, seeing your dad and MSG and and everything. You wanted that life for yourself. I mean, yeah, we started we started boxing at like we we started training at five. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I mean, from there, from there, from there, <laughs> was born. I can remember my father was always a fighter. I mean, he fight before I was born. So when I I came right into it, just born and raised, and just, I always seen him punching and kicking, and you know so. At the age of five, I mean, like we was going to the gym before that, but at five, so he started showing us. And at six, it was a tournament called the Kid Gloves, and he was like, "Okay, I'm put my boys in there. They're gonna get busy." And we, from there, we just was winning. I was, you know, my amateur record was 115 wins and five losses. So, well, you didn't actually go into kickboxing. You went into traditional kickboxing. boxing. Yeah, cause my dad went to the height. He went to the height of uh, kickboxing. Which isn't as popular as right. traditional at that boxing time, yeah, it wasn't, at all. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it wasn't popular. Like yeah, that, there was but, no MMA back then, right? So no they MMA. couldn't transition into the big leagues, right? Yeah. So kickboxing, my dad went to the height of it. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, he had better uh, hands than feet. You know what I'm saying? So my you know my dad was with Mark Breland. He went with Mark Breland to the um, '84 Olympics and stuff like that. So that's how he met a lot of people in boxing and. You know, at the end, he said, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to put my boys in boxing. And that's what he did. Right. And a couple of your brothers went into boxing as well. Yeah. 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 Daniel. Yeah. Joseph. But you did the best out of Joe. Well, I didn't do it. I was, I was, I probably went the furthest. I the furthest, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, as a minor, you were a two-time national champion. Mm -hmm. A three-time New York Golden Gloves champion. Mm -hmm. And you went out for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess you lost to David Diaz mm -hmm. in the finals, so you mm -hmm. didn't make it to the Olympics. Well, no. Well, I, I actually, I won the box off. I mean, I, I won the Olympic trials that year. They came up with a new thing called the box offs. A box off. You got to, you had to. It was like a double win you had to do, and he beat me in that tournament. And that tournament was the qualifying seat. So mm. I, I went on as an alternate. And then, and oh, so you went to the Olympics? Yeah. Oh, but you didn't actually get to. Right. 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 Was, was that disappointing? I mean, because um, it is the Olympics is the oldest, you know, competition on earth. Essentially, the, the oldest sports competition. At the time, I was devastated. I was devastated because people knew my amateur career, knew that I was, I was like almost untouchable. Right, you you're a beast. I mean? Yeah, yeah, I was winning everything. I, you know, so when I couldn't go, I was like, oh, I'm queer. When I, you know, the coach Al Mitchell was like, no, don't quit. My dad, no, 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 stick with it. You gonna be good. I mean, listen, God don't make no mistakes. I turned around and I did something in the professional ranks that you know, you know, you know, my guy that I went with to the Olympic trials and stuff like that. I mean, he didn't go that far, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> so you got the last laugh. Yeah, no, not it's, it wasn't even a laugh. It was just something to show the world that you know. Yeah, I was supposed to go there and do that, but I didn't do that. So in the professional ranks, I went higher than that. Right, because you went pro uh, at 18 years old yeah. in 1996. Yeah. So you were ready. I was ready. You were ready. I was ready. <laughs> and once you went pro, your first 17 fights, you won. Yeah. So you I was, were. I was ready. I, I probably was ready at. I probably were ready at 20 years old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, excuse me. At 17 years old, I yeah. was ready to go. How did it feel to suddenly start going undefeated? as you go pro, because now you're in the big leagues. This is mm -hmm. not Golden Gloves anymore. This mm -hmm. is not the amateurs. This is not people who are just doing it as a hobby. You're in there with people who are putting food on their table well, in that hard, ring. It was hard work and dedication, you know what I'm saying? Uh, at the time I came up in 96, I was uh, under Lou Duva and Shelly Finkel, and um, I was in a Prentonet Whitaker camp. You know, my, pro, my pro debut, I was co-main event to Prentonet Whitaker. Mm. <laughs> In Miami, and that was that was a scary. That was a, like you know the training camp was fun. I knew I knew I was going pro, but the night that it happened was like like you can go back and watch my uh, pro debut. It's on on YouTube against Michael Johnson, and when I got in there, I was you know I was ready. I was in good. I was in good shape. But when they zipped my jacket down, I was just I was like a dead headlights. <laughs> like like what's going? What's happening? I mean, remember I'm going into the professional ranks now. So now, like, no shirt, smaller gloves. Much no, much no, smaller gloves. Much smaller gloves. No, no headgear. Head yeah. 
and, and and thousands of people everywhere. You know, I'm I'm like, why am I fighting? I'm like, why is why is there so many people looking at me? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, what's really going on? So you know, I was kind of like stand like you watch this. I was standing in the corner. I was just stiff as a board. I was like, okay, but I was in good shape. I was ready to go. I did. I prepared for this fight because I didn't know what to expect. What was the professional ranks? You know what I'm saying? And that's another thing. When you got young, great amateurs going into the professional ranks, you know, ones that have that's gonna have a promising career, they do every like like I didn't know what the professional was. I just knew that, you know, I had friends, Mike Tyson, Pernell with a guy, I watched them and I'm like, Okay, they're pro, they cool, but like what's going what what am I gonna face? You know what I mean? So I started to prepare and do everything that I had to do, you know, mentally and physically and I was I was ready. I could have fought King Kong and I would have, <laughs> I would have won 100%. Well, then in 1998, you beat Mickey Ward yeah. for the USBA light welterweight title. Yeah. So now you're a champion. You're a world champion in one belt. No, I wasn't a world champion yet. Oh, so, so the, the USBA no, light? the USBA is the United States champion, a United ah, okay. States title. So at the time, Mickey Ward was, this is before the Gotti fights. I mean, you know, and this, go, and this goes down today as still one of my toughest People ask me all the time, who's who? You know, who's the toughest guy ever fought? People always think that I'm gonna say Floyd. Like, you mm-hmm. know, I know that Floyd fought. Who's the toughest guy he fought? Floyd? I'm like, no. I'm like, y'all don't understand. Mickey Ward. It came at a time I was only I was only 15 and 0 when I fought Mickey Ward. At mm-hmm. this time, Mickey Ward was like he was stopping everybody. He was like the promising Irish guy that he was he was good. You know what I mean? And he was he he, he had this liver body shot that he was stopping guys with you know what i mean so I, during the whole preparation and training our whole thing was the you know keep the elbows down to prepare for that for that body shot and he got it through one time he got it through and like the, he hit you in the kidney oh man uh, how, how bad did that hurt <laughs> i went to the corner i sat down and that's how you feel i was just sitting there, i was looking at i said like, he's like what what Stop the fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you asked your dad to stop the fight. Stop the fight. Stop he said, what? You know, not anybody know my dad. No, my dad is a my dad is an alpha male, a male, male, male. You know. What? 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 You mean? Fuck that. Get out there. Smash him. I said, yo, I think you broke my ribs. Like, fuck them ribs. Like, fuck them ribs. Man. Go ahead. <laughs> go out there. Get busy. Let's go. Let's go. Step to him. Step to him. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> no, this is no joke. I think he punctured Yo, my liver. <laughs> you understand. So when he, if you watch to the end, of, I think it was the end of the seventh round, he hit me the shot. Boom. A seventh or eighth round. I moved around the ring for the whole round. The, the end of the round, I just. So you're just I running kept, away from him, basically. I, yeah. I didn't let him touch me. I was like, oh, no, no, no. no. You're not getting it. I said, if you hit me with that shit one more time, again, in that same place, it's over for me. You know what I mean? And I knew that. And then, so once I made it past that round, I got to the corner. You know, I got some water. I got the, put, you know, the crazy. Like, you know, it was two fights. People, people don't understand that. It was the fight with Mickey Ward and the fight, which was the challenging, tough fight. Then I go to the corner and mentally got to fight my dad. Like, in the corner, he's like, what? Fuck that. You got that. You better kill this motherfucker. You better kill him. I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> mom. I'm like, Where's mom? Like, he broke my ribs. I'm like, he's like, I don't give a shit about your ribs. You know what I'm saying? Use your other ribs. I'm like, <laughs> no, you don't understand. It hurt. You know, so, you know, people that know my dad know he, he's no joke. Yeah. You know, he don't mean, <laughs> he ain't backing down. So, you know, but I'm glad that I had a person like that in my corner at the time that it was like the guy that I needed. He was like, Psst, I don't care about that. We prepared for this fight. He grabbed me. He, he rubbed it. He said, listen, man, let's go. We ready for this. And I was like, all right. Because, you know, because... Leading up to this fight, we kept talking about. It. He was like, mm-hmm. you know, he's my father kept asking me, like, you know, this, this fight. A lot, of, a lot of people said, don't take this fight. You doing good in your career. You climbing the ladder. Don't take the Mickey Ward fight. Mickey Ward is a, he, he, you know, at the time he was a veteran. He was known as he was like he had like thirty seven fights. You know what I mean? He was known as a veteran. I only, I only had fifteen, mm-hmm. and um, people was like, don't fight him. And my dad was like, you can beat him. So we had this talk all the time. When I came in the corner with the rip stuff, he was like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> He was like, hell no, Zach. Let's go. Block it out. Keep moving forward. 